Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if this is your first time here, then make sure you go and click that little subscribe button. It's like red. It's like you can't miss it. Like, make sure you go ahead and click that button for me. And if you're already subscribed, then welcome back to my channel. And thank you guys for clicking on this video. So, for today's video, okay, well, let me address something. If my background, like, my position, like, if you normally watch my videos, and you know how you usually, how I'm usually positioned, then it might look weird, but my mom's rearranging some things around the house for some reason, so I had to, like, find a new place to replace stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so if it looks funny, it's because I'm not in, I'm in a different place, but I'm in my house with a different place in my house. Anyways, it's not the point. So, um, for today's video, I decided to do, like, a college freshman advice video, like a 101, 101? Yeah, 101, like, tips video, stuff like that, because, well, you guys probably don't know, but I just finished my first year. Um, of college like I went away for school like I'm from Florida go to school in Tennessee so like drastic change so I was like hmm maybe I should make a video on like just like tips or like advice stuff like that because my freshman year I learned a lot and like all the stuff that I heard that I didn't take heed to I really should took heed to and it's something that I did here wasn't really what it seemed like so I'm just gonna like give y'all some is that a dog just gonna give y'all like some <laughs> Some of my tips. Some of them I found on Facebook, so I'm gonna read like the first few off my phone. Oh, my voice crack. I'm gonna read the first few off my phone, but then the rest are coming like from really off the top of my head or just stuff that I've been thinking about, like what I want to change for my next year. So yeah, let's get started. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? No, we ready. Let's go. All right, let's go. So I was on Facebook and I saw like you know how they have like some advice for like freshmen, college freshmen or whatever. So the first I'm gonna read off my phone, which a lot of these I can relate to because trust me, like it's it's the truth. So first things first, don't take classes that start before eight or at eight. If you could avoid it, avoid it. I start classes at nine o'clock, but don't try and take an eight o'clock class. Like don't do it. Like don't do it. I had an eight o'clock class. And I was probably late to that class every day. Every single day. The teacher liked me, so I was good. So I wouldn't take 8 a.m. class, especially if you're not a morning person. If you're not a morning person, 9, 10 o'clock would be more of a range. I wouldn't go to 11 because then that's too late in the day. Like, start your classes early enough, but not too early. So don't take classes that start before 8 o'clock or 8 o'clock. I wouldn't because I like to sleep. Okay? So yeah, that's so number two. Fun. Don't take three-hour classes that only meet once a week. I kind of think that's like the dumbest thing colleges could do is offer class once a week for three hours. Like, that's torture to the brain. Like, when you're in high school and middle school, you, you're in class for like 40 something, 50 something minutes. All of a sudden, you're sitting back in a three hour class once a week. Can you imagine a workload of that class? Like, because you're not in that class a lot, you get a lot of homework type thing. Don't take a class that only meets once a week. I don't even like taking classes I take that only meet twice a week, but sometimes I have to because I just don't like long classes. Like, I can't do it anymore. It's stressful and you want to sleep all the time. So I wouldn't take a class that only meets once a week for like three hours. Um, advice number three, when you write an essay, pick out the quotes and your examples first. Like what I do, I find my topic, find quotes and examples, and then you write around all your quotes and examples. Don't try to write all your like, all of your like stuff first because then when you go and look for examples and quotes like you have to try and make a match what you say but it's easier to match what you say about someone else's stuff like but yeah like the example says such and such such sort of saying yeah I feel this way and I have to go find like a quote for it it's more difficult so if you find your examples and your um, stuff first and you just gotta like work around it golden golden I haven't gotten less than an A on any paper I've written in college so far um yeah email your teachers and meet with your advisors um i know my school our advisors meet with us twice in the semester the beginning and the end and if you need to meet with them more often you can which i suggest you meet with them more often especially if you're like if you go into college not knowing which one to major in become best friends with your advisor like that's like that's key like I don't know about other schools, but my school, they're really helpful and they really make sure that you got your stuff together, which is the purpose of an advisor. And like, email your teacher. If you have any questions, email them. A lot of teachers in college give out their phone numbers. 
which I mean I don't find it weird but you might find it weird to text your teacher but a lot of teachers at my school like have their cell phone numbers which just shows me how like dedicated they are to like their students and work with their students so I don't mind it so if your teacher gives you their phone number use it don't be immature but like, oh that's weird I only text my teacher really like just text my phone. mom calls me in the middle of every video and I don't understand why why does Hello. Another tip. What tip number am I on? Am I on? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is five. Tip number five. Number five. Make sure if you set alarms that you actually turn them on. Like, make sure your alarms are on the night before. Like, if you have an iPhone, you know, you see a little clock in the corner. But also make sure that you have it set for the right time. Because I've been situations where I thought I set my alarm for like eight o'clock, really I set it for like ten o'clock because my finger, you know, slipped. To make sure your alarm is set and my roommate is the same way like her alarms look please make alarms your best friends like if you got to set ton of them to make sure you wake up do it please do it like make sure you wake up you don't want to miss your classes because you overslept i've seen too many statuses and tweets and stuff like that about people missing class because they slept overslept like Set your alarm, like wake up. Ask your roommate to sleep me to wake up if you have to. Like my roommate asked me to wake her up like almost every day. Like just make sure you set your alarm. And advice number six. If you eat in a calf, well we call it the calf or dining hall at my school, and like you're not you're not a person that likes to cook or you don't have time to cook or you don't know how to cook because you're a freshman and your parents cook for your whole life type thing, like I'm not bashing anyone, that's nice, that's great. I wish my mom would like. But, um, make, like, you could bring, like, Tupperware to the dining hall. And, like, when you go and get your plates of food and you bring it to your table, you just slide it in your Tupperware. Like, make Tupperware your best friends. Like, seriously. It, dead serious. So you might just keep it in your backpack. Like, I personally don't do that because I don't really like our calf food enough to want to bring it with me outside of the calf. But I've seen people that do it and, like, if you know you're gonna get hungry, or like you don't want to go to eat at an on-campus fast food place or something like that, get food from the dining hall, scoop it in your Tupperware, and have it for later. Like, seriously, seriously, change your life. All right. So, tip number seven: When you build your schedule, I don't know if like your school makes you have that much control over your schedule or like how you guys do it when you build your schedule try not to have big gaps in between your classes like don't have a class at eight o'clock which i said don't take eight o'clock classes but as an example i have a class at eight o'clock and then your next one isn't until 11. i don't have one at like 10 your next one isn't until like one because then that gives you time to go home get lazy potentially take a nap and then you don't want to wake up like you don't want to go to your next classes try and just do them back to back as if you were still in high school like just knock them all out, and then when your day's over, your day's over, you don't have to worry about your classes. But I know in some situations, you kind of get stuck having to have, like, a gap. Like, my schedule, I think I have a, like, I don't mind having, like, one gap. That's, like, an hour, because I use that for my lunch. But, like, I know I'm going to use that gap from 12 to 1 to go eat. So it's not like I'm going back to my room to go chill. Like, I know I'm going to go eat my lunch and go back to class or go to my next class. But, like, two, three-hour gaps in between your classes are, like, a big no-no. One hour is okay, because, I mean, you're probably just going to go eat food or something. But make sure you try and get your classes out the way. Like, I have, like, a 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock classes. I don't mind taking four classes back to back. I'd rather do that than have my whole afternoon to myself than to be in class at, like, 3, 4 o'clock because I have this long gap throughout the day. So, yeah. Do that. Do that. Just think about, it like, high school. That's what I do. Like, I have seven, in high school, we have seven classes. Seven minutes to get each classes. At my school, we have 10 minutes, 10 minutes before, like, a next class typically starts. So, like... Just think about it like that and you should be fine. Next advice, stay on top of your homework. Like a lot of classes at my school are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So like if I get homework on Monday, I'm not gonna lie, I'm guilty. I won't do the homework till Tuesday night, you know, when I could have done it Monday night. But because I know I don't have to class again until Wednesday, I wait till Wednesday, but don't do that. As soon as you get it and you go home, just do it. Act like you have the class again the next day so that you'll do it and you'll get it done. Then for like my Tuesday, Thursday classes, especially Thursday classes, because I know I don't have it again until like next week, Tuesday, I'm no worries. Like, I won't look at that homework till Monday night when I have class again Tuesday. And I probably should have done it Thursday night and be done. I have to worry about it, because slowly that starts to pile up. In the beginning of the semester, you probably get away with it, and like, you'll be Gucci, like, it's no big deal. But once you really start piling on that work, you start getting involved with stuff, 
you really want to make sure you just do it the same day you get it. That's what I try to do. Unless I have like a big project, then okay. But like, don't be like, oh, I got a whole day and a half. I don't need to do it right now. Just act like it's due the next day and do it. Like, yeah. seriously, do it. And that's all of like the tips that I got from my Facebook that I saw on Facebook that I can relate to at least. So now like these advice are gonna, like my own advice type thing, like stuff that I personally like experienced. So yeah, what advice are we on? I'm doing a terrible job keeping up with this. I don't know what number we're on. I'm just gonna assume we're on like number. I'm just gonna start out, I don't know. So, next advice. I could just look at the thingy. Okay, so this is tip number nine, I think. And I always tell myself that I just need to be myself. Like, when you go to college, you're gonna be like overwhelmed and wanna like fit in. And it sounds cliche, and then you're like, no, I'm just gonna be myself. I don't wanna fit in with no one. Low key, when you get there and you're like, so you go away for school, like you don't have any friends, you're gonna try to adjust and like conform to like what's going on around you. Simply because that's that's normal. That's like human nature to wanna conform just so that you won't feel so out of the box type thing. But honestly, Constantly tell yourself to be yourself because like if you say you are being yourself you end up in a group of, uh, With a group that you don't like That either means that you really aren't being yourself or that the, you need to change the person that you are So that you could fall into a group that you actually like because people are like oh, yeah Well, I was being myself and I'm friends with these people. I don't really like them Either you don't like yourself and you need to change yourself or really you're not being yourself because you want it to be in that group of friends So yeah, always remind yourself be yourself. Don't change for anyone like People will gravitate towards you, you'll gravitate towards people that you need to like be friends with. Um, so, number yeah. 10, I don't know how many tips I'm going to have, I'm just like rambling basically. Uh, number 10, tip number 10, don't forget your friends back home. Like if you go away for school, don't just cut everyone off with your friends with back home. Honestly, you're going to you're gonna lose a lot of friends when you go for, away for school. But honestly, I can count on my hands and my feet that I still talk to from like back home or at home like high school wise. So like, yeah, some are gonna fall off naturally, but don't like just stop talking to people back home because you're making new friends in college. Like that's probably the shadiest thing you could do is like cut people off back home. Like when you go there, still call your friends, especially your family, still talk to your family. Because usually when you need something, they're gonna be able to call or like if you need like my friends to pick me up from the airport, like don't lose touch with like people back home. like. Yeah, it's gonna be hard sometimes to like keep up with like their lives back home or like keep up and like hit them up all the time but like you say hey thinking about you something like that like ask them how they're doing or like they ask you how you're doing like at least still like exchange some type of contact sometimes even if it's not like full-blown everyday 24 7 conversations like i don't talk to my best friend every day anymore but like when i come home i know she's still my best friend and that goes for like a couple of my close friends back home like i can say in college i barely texted them but like when i come home i know that we're still solid and like people that I did fall off with I'm not mad it's not like anything awkward you just naturally grow out of some people as you go into new people like that's you can't help that so yeah don't not talk to people back home because when you come home you don't want to be lonely because your friends y'all don't live in the same places like you know tip number so yeah 11 tip number 11 don't expect for your roommates or sweet mates i don't know we call them sweet mates if they're like if we share the bathroom connection like it's like a sweet style don't expect for your sweet mates or like your roommates to be your bffs just don't honestly don't like me and my roommate are cool like we're close like we're friends friends but i wouldn't say like she's my best friend and like we're on the same page with that so it's not weird or anything but like don't try and be best friends with your sweet mates and roommates and stuff like that just because you live with them. Living with someone doesn't mean you're obligated to be their friend. Like, you have manners, respect them, talk to them, you could be friendly with them, but don't expect to get on like deeper terms or like hang out with them all the time type thing, stuff like that. My sweet got lucky because at first, like I said at first, we were all like super hella close and like hung out and like all the other stuff and now I don't talk to either of my sweet mates like that. I don't talk to them at all, really. Okay, one of them I don't talk to at all, and one of them I don't talk to that much anymore. And then me and my roommate, we're living together again, so we're good, but like, don't feel bad if you don't click with your sweet mates or your roommates, because it's just a living establishment. Technically, you don't even have to talk to them if you don't want to, but I mean, it'd be nice to talk to them, but just don't, don't go and threaten them to be your best friends. For the first couple weeks, you guys might try and stick together because you guys are all new and don't know anyone, but as the year goes on, you want to branch out, 
branch out and talk to other people. Like, don't just branch out. You'll start branching out and realize, okay, I, I don't really need my sweet mates and stuff like that anymore. It sounds shady, but honestly, it's the truth. Like, you're only their friends because you live with them type thing. And then once you meet other people, you're like, okay, I'm good. And that's honestly how it goes for a lot of people. Um, so, what are we on yeah. now? 12. Tip number 12. Don't overpack to go to college. Seriously, don't, don't overpack. Half the stuff I brought, I didn't even look at or touch or use or wore. Like even clothes wise, I brought back, I brought my whole closet with me to school. I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot. It is a lot, I have a lot of clothes. And like now that I'm like repacking, I've gotten rid of like the bins that I have my clothes in, like my winter stuff. I've gotten rid of like two of those bins and I'm leaving that stuff here. I'm like, I don't need to have that stuff. Like, don't overpack. Like, the rooms for one aren't that big. And if you're blessed with a big room, then bless your heart. Like, carry right for you. But I live in a dorm. So, like, typically they're not that big and you share with someone else. Don't overpack. Like, seriously, don't. I brought so many, like, dishes and spoons and cups and, like, my own set of dishes. Like, I could, like, move to my own house and have enough, enough dishes to survive with, like, type thing. I don't need that. Instead, bring like, or when you get there, buy plastic and paper cups and plates and stuff like that. Buy disposable stuff. Don't bring your good forks or your good plates or your good cups with you because then that means you have to wash your dishes and chances are you don't. If you don't want to wash dishes at home, you really think you want to wash your dishes in college when you don't really have, when you really don't have a choice but to wash it because your mom's out there to wash them? Yeah. Don't, don't bring, don't bring so many dishes. And don't bring a lot of stuff in general. Like I brought an iron, ended up not eating it because our laundry room has an iron, like stuff like that. Like, just think, I mean, you're probably gonna overpack in it for your first year, just be safe and sorry, but your second year you're gonna be like, I don't need any of this stuff. Like half of the stuff here, I'm like, mom, I'm not bringing this back with me. She's like, why? I didn't use it, I didn't look at it. My clothes, don't bring a lot of like, well, I call them yard clothes cause I'm Jamaican. I guess I call it house clothes outside clothes like stuff that you just wear around the house to be bummy in type clothes I call it whatever like stuff like that I literally brought all of my yard clothes with me why I rewore the same t-shirts every I'm one of those people that have like 50 t-shirts and don't want to get rid of any of them and I brought them all with me and like I realized I only wore like the same five every week or rotated the same few all the time like don't bring a whole bunch of t-shirts bring more outerwear clothes or like stuff you wear the class clothes than like your house clothes. I don't know if I was the only dumb one that brought a whole bunch of house clothes, but because I'm such a bum, I just thought I needed all my book clothes with me, but I didn't. So yeah, don't, try not to overpack. Like be reasonable, but like, are you really gonna wear this when you get there? If you know you're not, then don't. And also when you pack, pack for the weather that you're gonna be there for. Oh, this could be another tip, duh. Tip number what? 13? Only bring clothes that fit the season that you're in school for if you're going for school. So like I go to school in August, August to December. Um, it, like it's cold, like you know? So when you go there, don't bring your summer stuff for what? For what? Exactly, don't bring your, especially if you go somewhere where it snows. Like pack according to like the weather. Like when you're moving, buy winter clothes, buy fall clothes, bring mostly that kind of stuff when you go there. So that when you go there, the hello, you have like the appropriate clothing. Instead of bringing all the un unnecessary stuff that you know you should, that you're probably not gonna end up wearing because it's gonna be too cold to wear them. And like also when you go home, try to switch out some of your clothes. Like I'll bring like a suitcase full of clothes that I know I'm not gonna wear anymore or that I've overworn. And I'll switch them out for like another set of clothes type thing. Like switch them out for weather. Like when I go home in December and I don't come back till January, I'll drop off some of my winter stuff, even though it's still cold and start bringing in some of my spring stuff for like spring break and stuff. Like try and rotate your clothes as to when you travel home and like bring some and go there with some. Like there's gonna be plenty of chances to do that. So don't try and bring your whole closet at one time. Just rotate out your clothes, you know? Tip um, number, I think we're on 14, maybe 15. Um, For me, it would have to be Get, in, get involved, but not too involved. Like, people always wanna stress getting involved when you go to school, like, oh, join a whole bunch of clubs, or like, do this, do that. 
don't do it. Don't join a bunch of clubs your first year. Because for one, you're not going to want to be that committed to a bunch of clubs. Two, you're still trying to get used to just being a college student. And like, three, it just ends up being too demanding and you realize you don't have enough time for yourself. Like, don't lose yourself trying to join a whole bunch of clubs. I didn't join any clubs my first year simply because I wanted to get to get familiar with the campus, get familiar with the vibes around campus and stuff like that. And I had friends that like joined clubs and like I never saw them because they were so committed to these clubs or stuff like that. I'm just like, yo, like, it's your first year. Like, I understand you want to make friends. Okay, you join one or two clubs and yeah, cool. There's, there's no problem with that. I just didn't want to. But like, don't be trying to like join, be a part of every little thing that goes on on campus because that's impossible. You're one person. And plus, I feel like my priority in college is to get my education not to be in a bunch of social groups. That's just how I am, like, I don't really care about joining clubs and stuff like that. Like, yeah, they're nice sometimes, but like, at the end of the day, if it starts overwhelming my education and my schoolwork, you won't catch me at another club meeting. Like, that's just how I am. So like my first year, like I said, it's my first time being away from home, first time, first time going in for college, being a freshman, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to add any more to my plate than what I needed, which really enough of my plate was just my education alone. So I didn't join any clubs. So my second year, well, going into my second year, I probably am going to join a couple. But your first year, if you choose not to join any clubs, you'll be okay. I promise. Like you're gonna spend so much time just trying to get, just trying to adjust to college to use like what is a club. So like, don't make them pressure into joining a bunch of clubs. Like that's they're gonna be promoting. They're going to have a whole day of you just walking around trying to join clubs. Like, don't feel pressure to join a club just because they're saying you need to. If you need to wait, then wait. Tip number... So, I still don't know what number we on. 15, 16, 15, 16. Um, don't... Okay, my next tip is don't be scared to change your major. Like, when you get to college... There's a chance that you'll take this one class, this one class that could like open up a whole nother part of you that you know existed and make you want to change your major. Don't be scared to change your major based on like one class. Like if you know that's in your heart, like yo, this class really changed my whole perspective and you want to pursue something else, do it. Like it's not a crime to change your mind. You have until your honestly you have until your junior year to figure out what you want to major in. I think a lot of freshmen and sophomores or like society in general forgets that that's like the rule, like you have until your junior to decide what you want to declare a major at least. Like your first two years you can, but even then it's not declared until you're a junior. So like, don't be scared to change your major five, six times. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but you have time to do it. Like your first two years should be your experimental years anyways. So just experiment with different classes, take different types of classes, like Keep in the back of your mind that you know what you want to major in, but don't be scared if that changes. Honestly, I'm probably going to change my major after just my first year. I don't want to change my major, but I know that I'm probably going to change my major at the end of this, at the end of the fall semester. Like, it's, don't, don't be scared if it happens. Don't feel bad about yourself if it happens. I mean, honestly, you're still a teenager. Like, you, your life is not figured out. Like, do what you want to do. If you want to change your major, you can do it. But make sure by your junior year that you do know what you're majoring. Because then if not, you'll end up spending like an extra year in college because you declared too late or something like that. But yeah, so don't be scared to change your major. That's it. I feel like a lot of people are scared to change your majors. Don't be scared. Don't panic when you realize you don't want to be what you thought you always wanted to be when you were growing up. Like, just don't. Don't be scared. Don't be surprised when it happens. So, yeah. Um, Tip number 17? 18? Have your mom on speed dial. Or your dad. Or whoever your legal guardian is. Seriously. Have them on speed dial. I think that's self-explanatory. You're gonna, that's gonna be your favorite number. My mom and my grandma are on my favorites list on my phone. You're gonna be using the numbers a lot. A lot, a lot. So yeah. Um, tip number 18. Um, make a separate email that's just for your school email. 
which I'm almost sure a bunch of, I'm almost sure if not 99% of the colleges, when you like get into their school, they have like their own, you have like a school email anyways, but like in case they don't, make sure you have an email that's just for your school related things. Like don't be having your teachers email your personal email account, especially if you get a lot of junk mail like I do. So make sure you stick with your, keep your school account for your school account. And also don't start mixing your personal stuff with your school email account. Don't do it. Like, it's different if you have, like, an assignment and you send it to both your personal and your school email just in case one decides to mess up. You can do that, but, like, don't be having, like, personal stuff being sent to your school or, like, your school to sent to your personal. Like, don't do that because just try and be more organized with your emails. We like, have a professional email type thing. So, yeah, that's another tip. Um, tip number 19, 20, whatever number we're on. Stay on the lookout for scholarships and grant opportunities. I think that's self-explanatory as well. Be on the lookout. Like, honestly, it's hard to like apply for scholarships and keep up with schoolwork and stuff like that. But you have to make time for that, or else. I mean, unless you're rich or you're already on a full ride, and this is irrelevant for you. But like. If you're you, depending on financial aid and loans to like pay for college, look out for scholarships, look out for grants, look out for programs that give you grant money for being in their programs. Like I'm in a program in my school where I get a grant every semester for being a part of this program. Like yeah, you have to do like re the requirements to stay in the program, but at the end of the day you're getting less money. Like you're getting money to help pay for your tuition, so that's less money you have to pay out of pocket. So like I would just say stay on the lookout for stuff like that. My mom just called me again. That just made me mad. I'm just have to start ignoring her calls. But then she'll just call me again. It's just really, it doesn't know. One time is. I just wish she'd stop calling me. I mean, she doesn't know I'm recording, so it's hard for me to get mad. But it's kind of like, yo, dude. Talk about worst timing. Like, every video. Every single video. Anyways. I don't remember what number I was on. But I know I was talking about scholarships and joining programs. So, yeah, that was that tip. Tip number, okay, tip number 20, 21. I'm gonna have these numbers on, numbered on the screen because I really don't know what number I'm at because like, these are coming like off the top of my head, things I've been thinking about for just like a while now or like when I reflect on myself type things. So tip number 20, 21. I just forgot tip just that fast. Oh, when you go to college, you're gonna have a lot of people texting you, telling you they miss you, they can't wait for you to come home, um, when you come home we're hanging out, I can't wait to see you, that's it already. All those like kind of texts that make you think, wow, people at home really miss me, like when I go home I'm gonna have to hang out with everyone, everyone who's texting me, no. I've learned that half those people that's texting you that they miss you and that they can't wait to see you even when you go home for your whole summer breaks still aren't gonna see you. I've been home for four months now, and if I were to tell you like the amount of texts that I've gotten throughout the year that I was gone, and how many people I've actually hung out with or like spent time with since I've been here, be gr girl, yeah, I know. Don't, it's, it's just like a bunch of empty words. Like they probably miss you in like a moment where they realize that if you were here, you'd be doing something, but like not enough to where like when you come home, they wanna see you type thing. Like all those, honestly, Consider all of them BS until you get home and they actually text you saying, hey, let's hang out your home. That's when you know it's real. Don't, you could say you miss them back, I mean, a text message, because you probably do, honestly. You're going to miss a lot of your friends and stuff like that when you're away. But, like, don't get your hopes up to come home then that you're going to be hanging out with everyone that's texted you. Because you probably aren't going to hang out with a quarter of the people that texted you. Like, seriously. Like, it low-key kind of hurt my feelings that the amount of people that texted me they didn't really mean what they said because I haven't seen them yet. And like some of them, because like we're such good friends, I was texting to be like, so you're really gonna let the whole summer go by and I like, we don't hang out type thing. Still haven't seen them. And now my roommate's calling me, I'm not gonna answer. I'm not sure anyone else's phone call. I refuse. So yeah, so just, just expect some things change when you go home. Don't expect all those text messages to mean stuff to you. Cause honestly, you don't set yourself up for like a really big disappointment when you get home and realize that house people are full of crap. Point blank, period. 
All right. Buy your textbooks on eBay or Amazon. Don't buy them from your bookstore. Honestly. Maybe first semester, you probably just will go and buy them all from bookstores because you think you need every single book for your classes. But the second semester, you're going you gonna, you gonna to get put on game. Amazon and eBay. Amazon has that student account thing where you get like free shipping or free two-day shipping because you're a student for your textbooks. Use it. Seriously. Don't buy books from your bookstore unless you really can't find it online. Or unless it's the same price as getting it from your bookstore. And also make sure you rent the books. Don't actually buy the books. The way I do it is, if it's not pertaining to my major, I'm going to rent the book. If it pertains to my major, I'm going to buy it. I'm probably going to buy it off of eBay or Amazon. Also because it's cheaper and it relates to my major. So I'll probably want to keep it for like the rest of my life because it relates to my major. If it doesn't relate to your major, you don't need to buy it. You could rent it in that case. But if it's for your major, I suggest you keep those books. You probably use those, especially if you're like something like a nursing major or like a math athletic training major, like stuff that you know you're gonna need all the rest of your life because like it's gonna be in your face all the time type thing. I uh, buy my books, don't rent those books, buy them and keep them. And if by the time you're professional, you're like 28 with your life together, you don't need the books anymore, you can sell them. People will buy them, trust me. Or like even if you buy your other books that aren't related to your major sell them back on ebay or some even some school um bookstores will buy back your books even though you didn't buy them from their store so yeah don't be a book hoarder you really won't need half those books this was probably the biggest tip to myself and i'll probably end this video after this tip always try to do better than what you did last semester like set goals on honestly it sounds cliche but really set goals for yourself every semester at least like my first semester my gpa was uh three point a three point three i tell myself okay next semester i want my gpa to be higher i reached my goal my gpa was higher like every semester try and do better don't get complacent just because oh yeah i passed all my class my first semester i could keep doing the same thing no try try to do better because as the years goes on you want people like to see improvement and like to see growth if they see that you were stagnant, yeah, you could make like a 3.0 or like a 2.8 and keep it all four years. Yeah, that's average. That's good. But like people like to see growth. If they see that you did better every year of like college, especially if you plan on going to graduate school, that means you're developing, you set goals, and that it looks better to like do better in your last semester. So that's why I always tell myself, like always try and do better than what you did before. Always try to be a better person than what you were before. Like, seriously. Set goals, they're important. They're really important. They're hella important. Most important thing. I don't know what other tips y'all need. I feel like a lot of them are already, like people stuff that people already should know. But. So um, yeah, um, that's gonna be the end of my college tip video i know they were kind of like random and scattered but like they're just tips like one-on-one -on -one type tips so yeah um if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to give me a thumbs up and comment down below any like other college advice that you may have so that like other people that watch the video could like see your um, tips or like what were your like your top three tips for like getting through your first year of college like let me know in the comment box and if you're not in college then at least you know for the future what kind of you know tips and um also subscribe to my channel for more videos if you like this video, video i'm also gonna do a high school edition like a senior year high school senior year edition to this video well to this video to like uh, another video at least i might i'm considering it but um yeah so if you guys like this video like i said before thumbs up comment subscribe to my channel and also follow me on my social media platforms where I announce when I'm posting a video. But if you subscribe, you also get the notification that I'm posting the video. So you know, a win-win situation. And yeah, and I just realized, I realized halfway through the video that I didn't have any jewelry on. I feel naked and ugly. Like I low-key wanted to stop recording and say I can't post this video because I don't have any type of accessory on. But I recorded anyway, so yeah. Um, like I said before, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!